So welcome back to the channel guys and if you've kept up with us at all you know we're all about woodworking whether that be woodworking projects woodworking tools or restoration projects anything along those lines well today we're talking about one tool specifically that's the win 6524 oscillating belt and spindle sander if you're in need of one of these for your shop and you're on a budget this is definitely the video for you We get too far into this video guys you may notice it's sort of an up uh, re-upload uh, that's because the video uh, started getting a lot of views started getting a lot of subscribers and then all of a sudden it just hit a wall and that didn't seem right and yeah I know there's algorithms and that kind of stuff to contend with uh, and I actually reached out to YouTube just to see if there was any kind of a glitch uh, but anyway it got at that point and it literally just stopped and I've never had that issue before um, so I'm just trying this as an experiment I'm going to re-upload the video maybe it'll reach a wider audience get some views out there uh, but if you see this before and you thought you've already seen it just know it's I'm trying to see if there's a mistake on uh, the end of this or whatever it might be uh, so you don't have to watch it if you don't want to but I appreciate your support anyway uh, so let's get back to that video so guys a little bit of a spoiler warning here I have already unboxed this thing but I didn't want to not share it with you the main reason being i, I recorded this video earlier uh, i ran into some issues and decided to reshoot that video so that you'd have a best quality video i can put out uh, so unfortunately i have been into it but i'm going to take it out of here just like it came with the exception everything came in bags and i've already took them out of the bags and that kind of stuff but you're going to see exactly uh, what what it comes with and what features it has so naturally you see the 6524 here in a big black and white box, you know, colorful, isn't it? So we're going to open this thing up. Naturally, a bunch of foam, instructions, and your little uh, packing list, we'll call it that. And one thing I will say, uh, if you're getting this one, uh, pay attention to it mainly because I thought I was missing some stuff and I actually wasn't. It's actually integrated into the sander, but we'll show you that here in just a moment. So we're going to go ahead and pop the foam out of here. And like I said, I've already been into this thing, so you can see got a little dust on it already from trying it out. I apologize for that camera issues. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and show you what's in here. Uh, first thing you'll notice, the big part of it, is the actual belt sander. And you'll notice it's got one knob here, one knob is off to the side. The knob that goes here is actually what bolts that down. This is for your tracking and allows that to be tracked up and down to keep it in line. You've got this being a spindle sander. You have all your we're going to call them spindle inserts. It's the rubber pieces that all your sleeves go on to. Uh, and one thing I'll show you right quick, and this is where I got a little bit confused. And I've seen this online too. A lot of people said that they didn't get the half inch version of that, and I'll show you why. So you notice four spindle inserts and five spindle sizes. That is because the stub on top of this, the shaft for the spindle part of that, that counts as this one. That literally just slides on top of that. You don't use a rubber insert. Uh, and I'll show you more about that here in just a moment. We also got some of the hardware. That's the extra knob I was telling you about for the belt sander. That goes right in here and bolts it down. You've got a lot of odds and ends, little washers and a nut. So you'll notice you got one nut that comes in there. And there is a place on the side here for two. I can't figure out what the second one is. It, if it is, I, it's not in my box. Uh, either way, that goes on top of the spindle. That actually bolts your stuff down. And it comes with a variety of washers. And those just core... Uh, correspond with the size of the spindle attachment you're using. If you're using a larger one, naturally you're going to use the larger washer. 
smaller ones, this small one, and so forth. And then what else we've got in the box here are all your throw plates. So when you're using this spindle sander, you'll notice this also has five different sizes. So when you use that, essentially if you're using the large one, you're going to use the largest opening on your throat plate. And the big one, I don't know as much about that one. But now these, you notice they got holes all in them, little small ones. That is going to allow your dust collection to, to you know, suck the dust through there. And from what I've uh, read and seen on this, it's got pretty good dust collection, although I don't have the correct adapter for this one. Uh, so I'll be getting that soon. I know this thing is going to make a great accessory to the shop, so I definitely want to utilize that. Before we pull the sander itself out of there, if you get this sander, you'll get this little information guide here, the instructions. Uh, it'll tell you 120 volt naturally, 3.5 amp, one half horsepower, uh, and it's 11,500 RPMs at the motor itself. The belt speed is 1,575 feet per minute, and the spindle says it's 2,000 RPM, uh, and it has a travel of 5 eighths of an inch, and I'll show you what that's about here in just a moment. We're going to turn this thing over, and hopefully we don't do something crazy here. And as I said, you'll see a little dust on this where I've already had it out of here. I know a lot of you guys watch, like watching the unboxing that kind of stuff, so even though it's not truly the first unboxing, it is an unboxing. So, one of the bigger things you'll notice here too on top is this piece that takes up all the space when you're using the spindle sander. Put that in there, and you get your throat plates. And it just snaps in there for when you're sanding. Uh, really convenient to use. Uh, and one thing I'll say on this, uh, after going through it and seeing everything it has to offer, there are slots just everywhere for every accessory that this thing comes with. Throat plates, you can see those things are just everywhere here. There's also one thing I forgot to mention. There's a little hex wrench in here. Uh, mainly the nut that goes on top of this part. And that'll tighten that down. And then there is a larger one. And like I said, there's a spot for a larger nut. I have yet to find where it might go. I'll update you on that if I do find that. Uh, I'm not sure where it could be uh, either way. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up. But yeah, I really wanted to point out that, that thing had a, a lot of convenient storage for all your sandpaper sleeves, your um, inserts. Even the wrench has a spot on the side right here. And conveniently, if and when you're using the, the belt sander, it has this convenient lock guide. And I should probably show you that with that attached. But basically you put that on there and your belt would be coming through here and this acts as a stop so it's not trying to jerk any wood out of your hands, that kind of stuff. Uh, neat little safety device there. So guys, we'll get right into the meat of it. I'm going to go ahead and install this large spindle insert here. And literally it just slides down on that shaft here. Use the large washer followed by the nut. And you take your sander sleeve, pop that on there, and I would say make sure this thing's pretty snug. I mean, don't go crazy with it. What I used before this it was not very good. You've seen these things you chuck up in a drill, whatever, and it seemed like no matter how good we tighten those this little sleeve would come off and this one seems to stay on pretty secure like I said you ain't gotta 
go crazy with it, but you want to put some good pressure on it. So we'll go ahead and get this thing plugged up and I'll show you how it works out. Okay guys, before we get too much into it, I'm going to show you, as many of you have used on lots of different tools, this one also comes with a little safety device. Pull that thing out in case any of the kids are in the shop and they can mess with that switch till their heart's content and it'll never fire up. Put that back in there. It's ready to go. And now, I'm sure you heard that thing. It, to me, sounds like a shop back. Uh, but it's not too excessively loud, so I don't think, you know, earmuffs or anything like that are going to be um, in order. But we're going to go ahead and sand this side up here, and I'll even show you. Like I said, I have unboxed this before and tried out a little bit of a pressure test on it. I'll show you the same thing we've done here with, before we lost all the footage. Uh, but we're going to put pressure on that. And the main reason I want to do that is to show you this sleeve not coming off. Uh, like I said, I had that issue with the piece here. So we're going to show you that. And also to mention what I was talking about earlier, the 5 eighths travel. That moves up. That raises up and down 5 eighths of an inch. So a pretty good amount of travel depending on what you're working on. So let's go ahead and get this thing fired up. Now the pressure test. Okay. Even though that's only 80 grit there, uh, it smoothed that side up really well. I don't know if you heard me during all that, but I was showing you the pressure test. I put a pretty good amount of pressure on that just to show you that that sleeve is not coming off. Does a good job. Like I said, keep it tight. A couple more things I wanted to mention to you. As you can see here, I don't have the dust collection like I was talking about. I don't have the adapter for it, so it's getting quite filthy. Uh, but a lot of you guys want to check out kind of the finer details. And one of those being the, the top is aluminum. The bottom is all plastic, and I imagine to get all the storage in there uh, that's kind of what it had to be, you know, so many places for your throat plates and that kind of thing uh, And your sander sleeves uh, But one thing people want to look at is how flat the top is so side to side if you I Don't have anything with me, but if you look in here, that's pretty dead flat across through here now one thing I've seen online before is there just happens to be just the tiniest little bit I don't know if you can pick that up or not, but there seems to be just the slightest little raised area where this top tilts down. And speaking of that, to show you how this tilts down, you basically loosen these two knobs. And you can see this little metal piece on the side here. It's kind of inconvenient. That's probably the one downfall about this sander, I would say. You have to kind of reach back in here and push down. And there are positive stops on here. You can, you can see where that uh, stopped. At that, that particular one was 15 degrees. There is a 22 and a half, 30, as well as a 45. A lot of angles there for different different projects, you know, where you might be even sharpening a chisel or, you know, having to put a cer certain shape on a piece of wood. But the positive stops are definitely very nice. And one other thing I wanted to check too, a lot of you are interested in that one, uh, is 90 degrees on this part, and I'll check the belt as well. Uh, but on the spindle part, that thing is bang on. That's a little machine is square. Not that it has to be that square, but it's pretty square. As square as I'll ever need it to be. But let me get the rest of these things over here and we'll we'll throw the belt sander on there, show you what that's about.
Notice these little tabs. They'll help align up here and as well down here when you're not using this thing. It sits in here. It kind of keeps it out of the way when you're using that. When you're done using that one, take that out. Conveniently stores right there. Uh, and just pay careful attention. This little gray piece here, there is a plastic piece up top here that slides into. Make sure it's secure. Washer and the knob. And going back to that little piece I was showing you guys earlier, it just sits in there while you've got the belt in or uh, excuse me, the belt sander part of it installed. Just locks down while you're sanding because the direction is going this way, it kind of has a tendency to want to pull that. So put it in there, push it up against this piece, and it won't go anywhere. It's it's holding it right where you got it. And as with any belt sander that I've ever used, uh, quick and convenient how you change the belt, literally just pop this back. That slides off. Put your new belt on. And it's best naturally to get it lined up as best you can. Slide that forward. If you turn it on, you'll notice this may travel a little. And that's riding up about where it should be. Then as far as just a quick little demonstration for this, I'm just going to round over this edge here, show you how quick that happens. Nice little rounded edge here, and that's also you notice no burning. You don't get a lot of that with pine, but regardless, nice and smooth, especially for being 80 grit. So that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Hopefully, it's something that you found at least entertaining. If nothing else, it did inform you on maybe the features of this one. If you're, if you're kind of leaning this direction, especially you know if you're based on the budget. Uh, like I said, I started to go with a rigid one on this, and I kind of had eyes on that one for a long time, uh, and just price and, and you know being the right time is what actually pushed me towards this one it was just time to get one and I you know th this is what I could afford uh, it's plenty powerful uh, like I said on a lot of these I don't do a full review in these because I've not had it long enough to give you an honest opinion about it but I do believe it's going to be a good one I've never had issues with the other one over there uh, either way I think it's going to be a great addition to my shop hopefully it'll be a great addition to your shop too so thanks for joining us. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, the YouTube likes, and we'll see you on the next video.